Tony, what, what inspired you to take up the 12-string, this massive beast of an instrument? Actually, when I was in the spotlight column for Varney, my okay. Varney spotlight column, which was July of 87. Okay, right. So I would, like everybody else, playing regular four-string bass, and I, I figured that this was a time to try to expand. Right. I mean, which expansion doesn't necessarily mean you have to have more strings. It could have meant I could have studied something else. I right. could have... But I said, oh, I have to get something other than a four-string bass. So I got a six-string bass from Carl Thompson. Right, you had that made? And I had it made in 1987, you know, and he, he took two or three years to make it. Right. I got it. And it just, you know, having more notes to use can sometimes present problems. You know, it's like you, you especially when you're used to the narrowness of the right, neck. Right, so you had the low B and the high C? Is low B and the high C, and then yeah. you have all these other problems about like sympathetic strings ringing. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. in other words, like you're playing stuff and the B string goes, <laughs> Right, you have to mute it. <laughs> you have to mute it, and then you, it forces you to change a lot of things about your right hand, you know. Right. And again, like I didn't necessarily feel that it gave me what I wanted. Like it, it didn't inspire me. Actually, what uh, right? Well, you you must have been doing playing more upper register uh, passages, or uh, that's what I was when I when I got mm. the six string. Yeah. What I was trying to do with it was play it like a classical guitar, like you know, with the thumb and the sure, four fingers. Sure. And I was working on like Carcassi etudes and stuff like that. Then I just was like, you know, my phone was like, "What are you doing? <laughs> what that? What's that? What's that? That's not the bass, you know." So, yeah, he, he had made me realize that he had a point. You know, what mm. I mean, it's like. A lot of times when people get advanced, they have to go in this direction that takes them out of the realm of playing the bass. And like the guys that I've always liked are able to play like a regular bass within the confines of st strict rock, you know, harmony, right? And come up with cool parts. It's hard. It's hard. Well, you know, Marcus Miller says, you know, he says if, if you look at all the great bass players, whether it's Squire, whether it's McCartney, whether it's Jocko or Jameson, they did all their great work on one bass. Right. You know, there's that train of thought. And then there's the other train of thought. You have such an eclectic music taste. You go from, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gary Newman to uh, uh, Gary Burton. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes you need another instrument to do that. And what's what's the big deal? And it shouldn't be a big right. deal. You know, but I, you know, a lot of the stuff that I listened to in the 70s, guys would tend to go up instead right. of down. Like, in other words, like, they, they didn't really... A lot of the cool you stuff, else to go. they just went up, right, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they ended a note, like, you know, above the 12th fret, right, you know. Right, right, You know, the, 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 the low string has been useful to me, you know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, people that have those type of instruments, they tend to, like, just stay down there. Right, And right. it's overkill, you know. Mm -hmm. But other times, like, I've done recording sessions where people hired me and they like, they're like, I want five-string bass, you know, whatever. And I would like try to talk them out of it, and and I would say like, just let me do what I do, and you'll be happy, right? Usually it worked, but I remember one occasion where they weren't happy because you know why? They wanted the low notes. Okay. They wanted to let that low C. Right. They want it was part of the music. It was a '90s thing, right? Would you? Say yeah, it was. An, it was like in the, the the grunge days. Yes. Yeah. You know, like in other words, like they wanted like a guy pumping out like a low C. Right. Right. They didn't want it here. They didn't want it here. <laughs> right. Just the, the register was important. So you know what? I, I cut all the stuff over because, and I should have been more aware of their right. needs. You know what I mean? But so. So in comes the twelve string. In comes the twelve Explain string. Explain this now. It's it's really just it's really a four string. It's a four string, string bass with all the f roots here. You know, right. E. Well, I tuned this down to D. Okay. And then A D G. Okay. And then it's got a unison guitar string, mm -hmm. tuned an octave up. Right. But there's two of them. As opposed to the uh, you know Noel Redding eight string bass, right, right, right. it was just the guitar string and the bass string just in one. But this has an extra one. Mm -hmm. I, I think it makes a big difference in the, like it's a fatter sound, you sure, know. Sure, sure. But it makes it d difficult because the strings are very close together, mm -hmm. if you can see. Yes. You know? And you know most people that play this with a pick, they play with a pick. Mm -hmm. But I naturally, to me, it just seemed like I could do what I want to do with this with my fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the guys that play with a pick just tend to just play it like a bass. Yeah, right. You know, they just play, they're like doubling the, the bass parts, you know what I mean? But getting back to this, of course, I heard about this in with Cheap Trick, you know, so you know live at Budokan, you know, and you'd open up the record when you used to be able to open up <laughs> records, and you'd see this, like, headstock with all these, and I was like, what yeah. the heck? you didn't even know what it was, you know what I mean? But 
you would do your research and, oh, it's a 12-string bass, you know. Just by chance one day, like, 96, I picked one up. Mm -hmm. I was just in love with it. I was like, this is what I need to get all this stuff out of my, out that I can't get out. Okay. So it was like a means to an end, you know what I mean? It's like, once I had it in my hands, all of a sudden, all these things that I wasn't able, I was not able to express myself with like a, like the Tom Semioli Chuck Rainey bass. I needed, you know, I needed <laughs> this to get it out. Yeah. And, you know, I, I started just every day like writing stuff and mm -hmm. figuring out what do I want to do with this that Tom Peterson, you know, he's, you know, you know he's playing like, uh, uh, I want you to Surrender. want me. I didn't want to do that with it. I figure I have to try to figure out what's what can I do that's unique on this that nobody well, else he, is doing. I think he was making up for the fact that I don't think um, Xander played guitar much those days. So it was like they were a trio and their songs right. were ornately arranged and live. They only kept the, the four of them. So right. and I think that's what a lot of 12 string or multi string players do. They're making up for a lost member or, right. or an extra member. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But, you know. He was the early, he was like the only guy that was using one right. at the time. Doug you know? Pennick, when did he start doing that? I would I'm not really sure exactly yeah. what he used to. I think he used an eight, maybe I'm not sure. They did use a twelve, and when I saw them, yeah. I saw him at the trade winds. Like mm. he walked on stage with this, and everybody freaked out. You know what I mean? <laughs> because the, the, there was the people that no King's X, yes, yeah, no twelve string bass, no this. You know, he didn't play it for many tunes, mm -hmm. but so. But as far as what made my concept any different better for better or worse right. is my idea that I got to tune this string down okay. so that's for starters you know the next thing was I have to play melodies but they have to be figured out on one string mm -hmm. because this has got to always be resonating right. and I did that with my thumb you know so I was like you know chords on here which mm -hmm. which are like very simple triads you know with, with open strings like yeah. stuff wow. like like so that's basically was like my that when I recorded a record called Holy Land in, yes. in Holy 2005 Land. it was finished but started in like 2003 this was it I just every day figuring out how am I going to arrange this and do it you know and this takes up a lot of space and tracks yeah sure it does yeah. you know what i mean and i had like two and three bases on each track and stuff mm. like that so my engineer was frank bagnano helped me <laughs> sonically make it work because it you know it wouldn't work otherwise you know right but, but like this this bass had a certain register like a regular four string was i, I arranged it like that you know okay but, you can catch additional episodes and much more by visiting us on the web at knowyourbassplayer.com. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you next time here on Know Your Bass Player.